Okay, do that again. Hold your finish. Okay, stay right there. There we go. Keep that nice and straight. So it means you need more rotation. That's a little too much right there. This is your follow-through position with this arm being straight and your hands being right in front of your chest there. There you go. Good. Let the club bottom out. There. Good. Right heel down. There you go. The right heel staying down is important. Even though it's coming up just a hair, what that means, when even this, is that you're pushing off of it. And when you're doing it in the 9-3 to three swing, it's going to happen a lot in your full swing. There you go. So you just want to feel. Do it one more time. Go do it one more. I know. I owe you a dollar. <laughs> that was a hundred. Inflation's really a killer right now. Let this roll. There you go. So what this does, as long as this doesn't come up, but it rolls to the inside, you can turn your hips as far as you want and never have to worry about overturning them because you I can't see. turn them any further, right? But as soon as this comes up, you that's lose your brakes. You, that's why you say that. Exactly. So now you don't have to worry about how much I should turn my hips or whatever. to the inside just a hair you almost want the outside of your shoe to get light there you go good but still staying with contact with the ground good release looked good there right heel looks good ball position looks good Nice. Watch a couple from down the line. Those look good. Very nice. See, the club is there, but the club is actually here. Right? So I'll move that back to the back of the ball again. So I should yeah. be just in front of it, like you are right there. It's perfect. Okay. So yeah, it really looks. It's too much right arm there. Forward. To me. Let me uh, let me set up. Stay right there. Take your foot position. Now go stand face on. Does it look forward when you're looking at me? <laughs> well, it looks like it's. The center of the ball is right there. Well, I'm setting up square to this shaft, right? I see. So that's what we're using. So my target line is 90 degrees to that. Right. So right there would be my normal ball position. Remember okay. I said you can take this club and drop it off your left ear? Uh-huh. Stay steady. Right there. <clears throat> and you're saying the back. <clears throat> see, I've always looked at the middle. You're saying the back of the bowl. Which makes sense. Well, that's the part we hit, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so we've got to use the back as our guide. Okay. And so now it's hard when you're setting up and you're used to having the ball back in your stance. That's why I wanted you to look at me because it looks totally different. Right. But now when you look at me, it looks normal. But you had it like this and then a little shafting. So as we stand here and we get the shaft vertical, then we can work on that drill. Oh, my foot came up. But it's, it's not nearly as far back as you think. Well, and it makes sense to look at the back, to set it up where the back of the ball is where you... Exactly. And when you drop the club off your left ear, again, this is just kind of a generic guide, but yeah. that's, that's what you're looking for, is it should drop right on the back of the ball. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. It does. So this is where a mirror comes in really handy. Even when those little ones that we sell on the site you can stick in your bag, at and least you can keep checking that. I, and I do have one of those. Okay. So we we'll Definitely use that while you're making the setup change because this is, your eyes will start really playing nasty tricks. Good. Really good. That one was a little far back. It was far back? Just a hair. Yeah, right there is good. A little 
little right hand not, there. No shift. And not off. getting my shift. Exactly. Yep. The only two things you got to really worry about when you hit a chunky. Get that weight over there. That's your focus. Nice. A little different sound to that one. Yeah. And look at the divot, right? It's mm -hmm. way further forward. And so now when you're doing that, that's what allows you to maintain lag lo later in the swing when you need it. When it's back, you've got to start getting rid of it earlier. You'll never make solid contact. And that's why you hear a little different compression on the ball. It's perfect. When you look at the ball, do you look here? Do you look here? Um, honestly, I've never even thought about it. <laughs> it's one of those things where a lot of people like to... I, I saw Hank Haney not even look at it for a while when he was struggling with his driver, but I've never even given it any thought. You hit it like that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a good compression on it, right? Uh -huh. So this is one of those things, like I was talking about, a lot of times people start looking for answers, it, and I don't know where they're looking for, right? I, I get questions a lot of like, well, do you exhale on the downswing? I have no freaking clue if I exhale, if I'm inhaling, if I'm you know, thinking about lunch, like my brain, my brain goes blank. You can't be thinking unless you're practicing. That's when you think, but this stuff doesn't really matter. You know, it's the, at the end of the day, it's very simple mechanics that are going to cause you to hit the ball like that and have good compression. And it's, it's mechanics. You can't deny that stuff. And I'm not saying figuring out some sort of breathing thing might not calm you or uh -huh. calm your nerves or whatever, for sure. I believe in that. But when you're doing this stuff, where you look, what, you know, what you're thinking, all that stuff, it doesn't really matter. I mean, at the end of the day, you're trying to build a machine, a machine that has leverage, that can get the club face on the ball square. Right. Not any more complicated than that, you know? So the simpler you can make things, the better. The important thing is to learn these fundamentals, and then the rest of the stuff takes care of itself. So hopefully that makes sense, because yeah. I, I get asked all kinds of questions, and like, oh, well, how, what's the grip pressure on your middle finger? I don't know. <laughs> They're just holding on to the club lightly. You know, that's the that's the big picture. That's what really but, matters. But you do explain things really good. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, I've taken a lot of lessons over my lifetime, and they're like, I think I don't know the words you use. They're band aids. Yeah. Is that all they are? Well, there's not been much of a. Uh, a fundamental approach to the golf swing pretty much ever. The, the idea still pervis, pervades today that no, but there is no right way to swing, right? Everybody looks different, so you just gotta find what works for you, dig it out of the dirt. The stuff is nonsense, and you can see that changing. You go to the nation, or whatever it is, web.com tour today, right. look at those kids swing. They're you don't see the, the Corey Pavins, or the, no, you don't see that, same. right? Because we understand biomechanics and anatomy right. and physics and all that right. stuff now. So at some point, all these dinosaurs who still believe that, you know, you're just going to have to dig it out of the dirt and try this and try that until you find something works, they're going to fade away. At the end of the day, science is going to take over everything. Look at the Olympics. You watch somebody do a, you know, a clean, they lived exactly the same because we found the right. most efficient way to do it. Exactly. Golf is, well, how does golf buck the laws of physics? It, it, it can't, you know. Yeah. The great thing is you have this 9 to 3 stuff down. It looks great. Weight shift, it's, it's fundamentals, right? Right. Ball position's off. Right. If your ball position's off, the weight shift is off. Lag is off. That's all it is. If you work on the little fundamental stuff, the rest of stuff is easy. It's all details. So what I'd like to, I'd like to see hit a couple bigger ones, longer ones. Okay. So we've got plenty of time here, and I'd love to see, get it on video, and see how this translates into you know, okay. your bigger swing. But what I'd like to see is the right way to do it, which is incremental. So in other words, you've been hitting these shots about 50 yards. Let's go 75, that looks good, we'll go to 100, 150, so on and so forth. Rather than, 99% of the time, if people are doing the drills, that's the first part, I get them up off their butt and start working, right? If they're doing that and they're still struggling, it's because they go from zero to 100 and they skip everything in between. And if you're smart about it, you'll go zero to 15 miles an hour to 25 and to 50 and so on. So that's the goal here. So let's just add another 25 yards to these shots. Okay. You know, I may not have done everything right, but I probably have ten or eleven thousand reps. Do you really yeah. of the nine to three stuff? Well, and trying to stack them. Maybe I've stacked them to. Oh well, your nine to three stuff looks great. So clearly, the work has paid off already. Very nice. So now watch that. my heel up, though. Good. 
this is the whole point, right? Is you to be able to self-diagnose. You know when this happens, you're pushed off that right side. It's going to allow everything to rotate open. It's going to delay the release of the club face. You're going to try to make up for it with your hands. And then your golf swing does become this big bucket mm -hmm. of compensations. But as long as you detect it, now I would see a couple practice swings where I'm keeping that right foot down because that was the biggest mistake. There you go. Okay, now what'd you feel there? Probably a chicken wing. Okay, now what would cause, a chicken wing is not a cause. Right. It's just an effect, right? So what caused the chicken wing? The I didn't get over quick enough. Okay. Maybe. So what causes a chicken wing in general? Forget what you're working on right now. What causes a chicken wing? There's only one cause of it. Too much right hand. Exactly. Right? So you're pushing your arms across your body. This arm has no choice but to bend. Right? Because you're not turning. You're okay. just trying to let the club release. So if you're aggressive with your right hand, that'll always happen. Now, you hit it a little bit heavy. Right? Right. You either didn't shift or you used too much right hand or both. Typically, one precludes the other. So in other words, if you start pushing hard with the right arm early, you won't be able to shift your weight because your weight, your force is going down while you're back on your right leg. And so then you get the double whammy. You're going to hit it fat because you can't shift and you're overusing your right arm. The whole trick to it again, don't make it complicated. All you need to do is focus on what? What do you need to focus on in the downswing? The number one priority to avoid the chicken wing and hitting it fat and all of that stuff. And it's the first step in the five step system, which is what? What's the first step in the RST five step? I have to think about that. That's okay. The first thing we do. Weight shift. Exactly, and, and that's turn. it. If you shift your weight, if you were really aggressive shifting your weight, your divot would be way out here, right? You don't shift it enough, you're gonna hit it fat, right? right. So, so forget every, you hit it chunky, no big deal. Shift your weight, relax your right arm. Problem solved instantly. So that's all you need to focus on. I think another thing I didn't do, I don't think I got, I didn't get any shoulder blade glide. You were a little, you folded your right arm a little bit aggressively going back and that caused you to want to load it, unload it coming down, but that's okay. Okay, pretty close there, just a hair thin. And again, they're kissing cousins. If you're pushing really hard with the right arm, you can keep the club from bottoming out. Better. There you go. Excuse me. No, no, you're fine. Know, I didn't know it was. Oh, no, it's not going to hurt it. Great job staying down. Uh, wasn't good. It's okay. What did you do? I tried to rush my My right, I didn't get over fast enough. Exactly. So again, if you start to fire your right arm too soon, you won't be able to shift your weight. So your number one job, shift your weight. Forget everything else. Right. If that doesn't work out, the rest of it's all compensation. Right. There you go. Yep, you gotta watch the ball position. Okay, pretty close there. Divot was out front of her. Yep, exactly. The ball was a little bit back in your stance. I'd move it up just a hair. There you go. Okay, stay right there for a second. Do you feel like that shaft is vertical at address? Or do you feel like it's leaning toward the target? Uh, might be leaning toward the tar yeah. target. So if it's leaning toward the target, what does that mean? You keep moving this ball back, what's going to happen to that shaft lean? It's going to increase, right? Right. The shaft should be vertical. That's telling you where the ball position should be. Really? 
So yeah. I want it to be vertical. Absolutely. Okay. So so think about it for a second. If you have the shaft, let me grab this. I never heard that before. Well, what what are you saying that, to yourself if the if the shaft has shaftling? You're instantly presetting it behind your hands. Right. So when I go during the takeaway, it's already going to want to be inside. If you want the club to stay outside your hands, which most every golfer makes the mistake of it going too far inside, right? You're just starting out there. You're starting out with it behind. I got you. If it's in, if it's in line and vertical, it's very easy for me to keep the club out in, in front of me. Makes sense. That's leaned forward about three degrees. There you go. Now we look like a golf pro. Close, you just didn't shift. You turned, and this is the this is the trick. You turn really well, your hips rotate really, really well, but you can't just turn. You've got to move into that left side, because okay. that's going to move the divot forward. Closer. Still hung back just a hair, and your right foot came up. So what you're wanting to do is very, very common, and that is as you go back on this 9 to 3 drill, because it's such a short swing, you've got to kind of be patient to give yourself time to make that lateral shift. Instead, what you did was turn, and now I didn't get all the way over. And that, that inch of movement translates into a divot that's in front. So shift laterally to the left. Oh, stay right there. Do it again. Hold your finish. Stay right there. Yeah. As you, remember, I want this. There you go. See how that lets your hip release forward toward the target just a hair when this rolls to the inside. If it's staying flat, your hip can't move, right? So if I'm like this and I'm at impact and now I let this roll to the inside, watch my left hip, how much further it's going to move forward. Mm -hmm. There you go. Your checkpoint is if the outside of your right shoe comes up off the ground a little bit. Then you know you've shifted far enough. Okay, watch the shaft lean. Move. And I don't need to move your hands back. Your hands are perfect at address. You need to move your whole body back just a little bit. So shift your feet back. There you go. There. really close. Weight shift was really good. It was the tiniest bit too late. So if you did it just a little bit earlier, it would have happened while your hands were still back here. Mm -hmm. But instead, you kind of did them together, and that's why you hit it a quarter inch heavy. Otherwise, it was beautiful. So watch the ball position and shaft lean. Now the ball position look all right? It does. Now you set up with a closed stance. Is that something you've always done? Maybe. Okay. It's probably, do you typically play a draw? Or have you no, it hit doesn't. it pretty straight? So you set up with your shoulders square and your feet closed to the target. That's how you've been this morning. So when you're doing that, that's typical of somebody who sets up with the ball way back in their stance. Oh. There you go. Now we're squared up. Almost perfect. And that, with the setup change, is going to really mess with your eyes. You can move the ball back a little bit further with your square stance. So move it. You can move it back in your stance, just a hair. As long, if you're going to start setting up square, because when you set up closed, having the ball back in your stance works out because it allows you to come from the inside and still get it on target. So this right would there. be okay? Okay. Is your shaft vertical right there? Yeah. So your left hand just going to hang down right on the inside of your pants seam there, and that's where right. it should be vertical. There you go. And is that vertical? That is, yep. Almost perfect. Really, really close. Weight shift. Just a hair late, right? And so you used your right arm. When you're doing the 9 to 3 drill, it's tough because you don't have all this momentum and load up to get your pelvis shifted all the way back to the left. So that's why when you're doing the nine to three, you just gotta be a little more patient. When you're going full speed, it's a little bit 
easier in some ways to mm -hmm. get that move because you have more time before you bring that club back down. So the trick is, again is never trying to hit nine to three shots very hard because you'll start to really overuse that right hand. So just be a hair more patient with your arms with the club and focus a little more on the weight shift and you've got it perfect. There you go. Just leave the club back there. Nice. Very good. Was that a little late? It was pretty darn close. Felt like the ball went that way. The ball was right on your line. But again, Listen. your eyes because you're used to setting up closed with the ball way back in your stance, your alignment's gonna feel really funky. Well, so that, I, I was late there, I think. Just a hair. But as far as the ball, that's exactly where you're lined up with your chest. Your feet were still a little closed, but nothing like, I mean, your feet were lined up almost with the checkered flag, the black and white one before. So again, this is why when you're making changes, having shafts down on the ground for checking your right. ball position, your alignment, because otherwise we start doing all kinds of crazy stuff and then we, we use the ball to, to tell us what we're doing wrong and that's terrible, right? So if you're getting comfortable with, with that, just keep practicing when you, when you practice on your own with the shafts down on the ground. Good, that was a good way, good timing of it. Yep, perfect. I like that. How'd it feel? Pretty good. Yeah, it felt solid. It was very solid. So it's just getting comfortable with that timing of it, right? You feel like you probably have to kind of wait a little bit with the club before you bring it down. You might describe it in different terms, but that is a, an effect what you're doing. Let the club kind of flow and swing back and focus on the big muscle movement, the core fundamental stuff and with the ball like that. It's, okay. it's always down to the simplest fundamentals when people get way off. It's you know, set up balls way back in your stance or way ever whatever your shaft lean all this stuff when you start getting all those things off you just start having to chase your tail around in circles but by just getting these little fundamentals down i mean that ball's perfect and then it's just a matter from there the only thing you change is as you start building this you make a bigger turn and that's it and your swing otherwise your swing looks awesome man. really really good okay any questions thoughts concerns for me anything else i can help out with <laughs> Yeah, I'll live at my house and help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in Colorado now. It's as close as I got. But <laughs> well, good. So anything else I can do for you? Well, <laughs> I probably need to get this down. Absolutely. Right? But look Sorry. at it this way. What you just did was took what you've already done, which is really good. You've obviously done the drills because you're shifting. You've got lag. You've got a good impact. You've got a good release. And you had a couple little things that you got a little lazy on ball position set up boring stuff set up fundamentals right nobody mm -hmm. cares about that mm -hmm. stuff but they're everything and now that you have that the only thing you have to worry about is just making a bigger turn once you get comfortable with the new your your eyes getting your nervous system comfortable with that and you get comfortable with the ball position and all that all your swings done I mean you have great lag you've got a great impact position you've got a great weight shift you've got a good post up move don't worry about all that stuff just slowly make this turn a little bigger that's it let me ask you, to me, this is where my, I put my ball for the driver. Mm -hmm. Same place. So with the driver, it's a specialty I mean, club, right? You can move the ball up in your stance. Yeah, I, well, I guess. <clears throat> so let's see that. That's where I want to be on this ball right now we're close there i would say you can move it back just a hair right there i'm assuming you know, this is your target line yes so right so so right there would be perfect and again anytime you get confused you drop a club off your left ear if it drops down to the back of the ball we're, we're in good spot there. okay and then my driver yep would be here it depends on the angle of attack that you want to create right so if you move it up an inch you might pick up a degree and a half, two degrees of angle of attack to get it more positive. You move it up a little more, you can go a little more and so on. But 
it just depends on what you want to do. For me, I move the ball up slightly, but I still like to hit down on it a little bit because it's easier to control, right? Because the bottom of my swing arc is the same for every club. Right. And then as I start moving to the driver, I, I don't want to hit down on it too sharply. It's going to cost me a ton of distance, but I don't mind giving up 15 yards because I've got the speed to, to make up for it. So if you don't have a ton of speed and you want to hit it as far as you can, the more you open up or more you move it up in your stance, the more positive angle of attack you're going to create. So you just have to find where you're comfortable with that. But of course, as you start moving it up, the club face is now closing. Right. And so now you got to start also closing your stance to compensate for. So there's where these little balances, trades and trade-offs come from. In the Balm Your Driver series, I talk about that, where you, is you're going to keep moving the ball up in your stance, that's fine. But now you got to start aiming a little more right to allow the club face to be closing as it's further up there. Right. But that's just a little, it's a personal preference thing. I used you to, want to flight it lower. I do, because it's just easier to control, right? So I, if I can carry it 285, but hit it short or, or low, I know where it's going to go every time. If I need to carry it over 300, I move it up, you know, and I'm going to tee it up. And I, but again, I'm talking about this much discrepancy. So, but I'm only going to do that under it's wide open, it's downwind and whatever, and I'm swinging really well. I know where it's going, right? But most of the time, I'll give up the distance for control. For me, I mean, at this altitude, I if anything over 200 yards is a good drive for me. Okay, so. Let me, let me just watch you hit a couple drivers if you don't mind. Just out of curiosity, I'd like to see what uh, where you're setting up normally. I'll see if I can't give you a couple quick little things to see if there's anything obvious. Generally, being in Denver, the higher you can hit the ball, the better. Yeah. If you, because you just need the ball to stay in the air as long as humanly possible to maximize the distance here. I guess I'd set up back right. Yeah, that's that's pretty up in your stance. I mean, it's totally fine there. Not too bad there. So the only thing that was obvious there was the lack of weight shift. So okay, so keep working on that weight shift. So. You did what a lot of people do. Nine to three drill looks awesome, right? It's, it's right where we need it to be. When we grab the big dog, now we start trying to muscle it with our arms and shoulders again, and then it's gonna cause you to cast it. You're not gonna shift, and that's why you actually, your swing path has been awesome this whole time with the irons. You've hit everything pretty much straight or maybe a little baby draw, and then you grab the driver, you actually came over to hit a pull cut, which you haven't done anything like that the whole morning, right? So all that is is, is this. So all you've gotta do is, again, focus on weight shift, there you go. That will help you maintain lag longer, but the sequence of it is going to feel weird. Like we did in our 9 to 3 drill. Right. You're going to feel like you got to weight with the club and you focus on your lower body to bring the club down. There you exactly. It's that sequence, right? You don't have to exaggerate it crazy. What you just did there is is a little exaggerated where you're really leaving it up here and then shifting and then bringing it down, but that's what it's going to feel like to you when you keep working on this with the driver. It's going to feel like you leave the club at the top focus just on your lower body and you'll maintain way more lag and start bringing the club down the inside. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Well, you are our first one on the road show, so I appreciate <laughs> appreciate you coming out this morning. Well, I hope this doesn't discourage your road show. <laughs> Not at all. It was good.